Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Mr. Winter's chemistry videos. I'm Mr. Winter. Today we're going to be talking about moles and molar mass, how to calculate molar mass. So in the last video we talked a little bit about what the mole was. Remember the mole is a counting number uh, and essentially this counting number allows for us to know how many particles there are in like everyday samples uh, of atoms, molecules, compounds, etc, etc, etc. So today you're going to need a periodic table, um, a calculator, a pen and pencil, and some way to take notes. Remember down below I've linked a graphic organizer. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, as far as moles and molar mass go, once again, uh, a mole is specifically this counting number uh, in which one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. Um, that is Avogadro's number. Uh, remember, it's named after him, not he didn't discover it or anything like that. So what is important about this is that we need to realize that no scientist, no chemist is going to be like, hey, yo, Bobby, I need uh, X amount of moles. Um, that, that's not reasonable. That's not a, a way that we directly measure things in a laboratory. The way we do that is with mass. So as far as mass goes, as far as mass goes, um, mass is specifically the amount of matter in a substance, the amount of matter stuff a substance has. Um, and oftentimes we will be measuring this uh, with the units gram. So the mass units, the units are going to be in grams. Um, the SI unit specifically is kilogram. Um, but as far as what we're talking about um, and small atoms and such and the such, uh, lowercase grams without the prefix rather uh, is perfectly fine. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, when we're measuring mass, when we're measuring mass, we want to use a digital scale. Sometimes you'll have a triple beam balance in class. Uh, but really at the end of the day, know that mass and weight are technically different, uh, but some bad questions that could propagate, propagate in your class would be like, what is the weight of this thing? Just know they're referring to mass, even though you know those aren't the same thing. So moving on, um, what is molar mass and, and why is that important to us? So first off, molar mass um, is going to be this conversion factor that allows for us to convert between moles and mass. Today we're just going to be looking at how to determine the molar mass of an element or a compound. Um, and it's specifically defined as the mass of one mole of a substance. Now this is important. Um, it, it's important because you can have one mole of element X and one mole of element Y, but those substances don't have to have the same mass. And the example that I like to use is this. If I had a dozen chicken eggs, I'd have 12 chicken eggs. If I had a dozen ostrich eggs, I'd have 12 ostrich eggs. But the masses of each one of those samples, the 12 chicken eggs and the 12 ostrich eggs, would not be the same. The ostrich eggs would be significantly heavier than the chicken eggs. So just because you have the same amount of something does not necessarily mean you have the same mass. So what we need to understand and what we need to think about is how we determine the molar mass of a substance. Um, and it's actually quite straightforward. The molar mass is going to be quantitatively equal, quantitatively equal to the average atomic mass, to the average atomic mass, which can be found on the uh, elements, uh, can be found in the elements box on the periodic table. Mass. So for example, um, hydrogens, Hydrogen's average atomic mass is 1.008 uh, AMU, or uh, the molar mass, which I oftentimes will label with M with little feet of hydrogen, is 1.008 grams per mole, meaning that if you were to have one mole of hydrogen atoms, the mass would be 1.008 grams. Uh, another example that I like to use uh, is carbon. Uh, carbon comes up a lot. Here's my big old periodic table. Uh, carbon's molar mass uh, can be viewed right here. Uh, the molar mass of carbon, oh, that was bad. Let's try that again. The molar mass of carbon, there we go, is 12.01 grams per mole. Um, and this is going to be coming up a lot. You're going to memorize so many molar masses that uh, unintentionally, too, you're not even going to do it on purpose, uh, that you're, you're going to not even need a periodic table. 
so last but not least, um, how do we determine the molar mass of a compound? Well, it's actually not too bad. The molar mass of a compound can be determined by summing the molar masses uh, for the constituent elements of the compound. Meaning that if you know the molar mass of one sodium and one sulfur, which is Na and sulfur, you can determine the molar mass of sodium sulfide, Na2S. So using your periodic table, let's go ahead and look up the molar mass of sodium. And we find that it's 22.99, and there are two sodium atoms. We're going to add the molar mass of sulfur, which depending on periodic tables is either 32.06 or 32.07. Whatever periodic table you're using, just follow that. Uh, we sum them up, and we find that the molar mass of Na2S is 78.04 grams per mole, meaning that if you were to have one mole of Na2S compounds, you, your mass would be 78.04 grams. We'll do the same thing over here with barium nitrate. We'll go ahead and clear and scooch over. Um, barium nitrate is, uh, sorry about that. Barium nitrate is um, BANO32. There we go. Uh, and we can determine the molar mass by looking up each of the individual masses of the elements on the periodic table. So the molar mass for barium is 137.33, and there's just one of them. This two is going to distribute into the parentheses. So there's going to be two nitrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms. So we know that it's going to be two because the two nitrogen. The molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01. And then there are six oxygen atoms, so six times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. Generally, by convention, I always use two decimal places when doing um, molar mass. And it, everyone's different. Um, as long as you are fairly accurate and close, you'll be good. Uh, the molar mass of barium nitrate, BANO32, is 261.35 grams per mole. Awesome. In the next video, I'll go ahead and show you how you can use these to convert uh, between moles, mass, and particles. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day.